My name is Jean Marie Heron. I'm a certified professional organizer and the business development manager for the Junk Luggers. My mission is to improve the quality of people's lives through the decluttering of their homes and offices in an eco-friendly and non-judgmental way. If you'd like to see more of these videos, simply click the subscribe button. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Jean Marie Heron, and welcome to our monthly Zoom Lunch and Learn. Today is really kind of neat. Um, we're going to have a guest speaker. We're going to be talking about organizing for weight loss for not just summertime, but any time. So. Um, I wear a couple hats. I do a small amount of organizing with my organizing company called Posse on the weekends. And mostly I work as the business development manager for the junk luggers during the week. And having been an organized, I, an organizer for a long time, I know a lot of organizers. And today we have one of my favorite organizers with us. Deborah Gussoff and I have known each other for a very long time. Um, and she recently wrote a book, which is on Amazon. So I'm just going to read a little bit about her, even though I know her really well. So some of you can also be enamored by her credentials. So um, since 1994, certified professional organizer Deborah Gussoff has been helping clients streamline, streamline, simplify, and organize their space, time, finances, and lives. She works one on one with clients, both in person and virtually. She's the author of the book Organizing for Weight Loss A Slim Little Guide to Getting Think Thinner, and a contributing author to Big Bold Business Advice from U.S. Business Owners. So Deborah has been an active volunteer with NAPO, which is the National Association of Productivity and Organizing Professionals since the 1990s. And she recently served as the president of the Northern New Jersey chapter of NAPO. So the chapter was formated back in 2005 and I had the privilege of being on that formation with her. And this year I got to serve as her secondhand person as director of large with uh, NAPO Northern New Jersey. So it's, it's a delight to have her and work with her. Um, she is the mom of two adult daughters and the dog mom of two Havanese puppies. And she resides in Morris County. So a little secret, today I've been puppy sitting for my mom's chihuahua. His name is Tyke and he's behind me. He's 15 years old and he has three teeth and I'm praying he doesn't bark during this presentation. So, <laughs> all right, um, we're going to go right into the presentation. Couple of housekeeping rules. Um, Deb, my assistant, is manning the chat box. So if you have any questions, go ahead and put them in the chat box. Otherwise, what we'll do is in about 15, 20 minutes, we'll open it up to Q&A and uh, Deborah can answer any of your questions. So Deborah, you tell me when it's okay to change slides. I will, thanks. Now go back to the first one, please. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay, thanks Jean Marie. Um, Jean Marie is, I'm sure you all know if you're on her uh, Lunch and Learn and her e-zine and all of that is awesome. So it's been a pleasure working with you. So my name is Deborah, and like Jean Marie, I am a certified professional organizer. And as she said, I started my business in 1994. And when people hear that I've been in business for almost 30 years, invariably one of the very first things they ask is, how did you get started? Next slide, please. So I like to say that this career path is my socially acceptable way of rebelling. I was raised by a terminal pack rat with a hoarding disorder, and the house I grew up in was chaotic. And the pictures on your screen are pictures that I took in my mother's home prior to emptying it a year and a half ago. I have really vivid memories of being nine or 10 and spending part of my weekend organizing the school supplies in my desk and the closets in my childhood bedroom so that I could have a calm, peaceful, productive space for myself. Next slide, please. I can credit my mother not only for my career, but also for some of my food issues. As I write in my book, when I was growing up, my mother fancied herself as a gourmet cook. She loved experimenting with all kinds of recipes. And while I might've enjoyed some of them as an adult, as a child, I deemed them an unmitigated disaster. One of her very favorite things to make at that time was a concoction called pea mousse. It was a frothy, jiggly concoction made of peas and heavy cream and gelatin, among other things. Next slide. 
The mixture would then be put in this stainless steel ice cream bomb and refrigerated until it was solid. It was absolutely vile and my brothers and I hated it. When I was in second grade, my teacher, Mrs. Watkins, gave us a writing assignment to write about the thing we hated most. And I chose to write about P. Moose. My teacher, having never heard of P. Moose, because of course, who had, thought I had misspelled the object of my dislike and corrected it to read Pete Moss. When I took the essay home, I clearly remember my mother looking at it and saying something along the lines of, well, your teacher obviously isn't much of a cook. My siblings and I complained about the various foods we disliked so much that my mother must have finally gotten fed up, no pun intended, and she created something called The List. At the beginning of each month, my brothers and I could select up to three items that we didn't want to eat and add them to the list for the month. We were excused from eating those items, but the deal was we had to eat everything else without complaint. We had to be quite strategic about the things we put on our list. Certain items like orange squash were seasonal. Throughout the fall, that had to be on the list, but could come off in the summer when it was out of season. Other items like pea mousse needed to stay on year round because you never knew when that was gonna show up on the dinner table. As I like to joke, is it any wonder that I have issues with food? Pregnancy and the years following the birth of my second daughter saw me gain about 30 pounds. When my daughter was a preteen, I felt like I could no longer attribute my expanded waistline to baby weight. I needed to take action. As a professional organizer, at some point, it occurred to me that I could apply my organizing expertise to the goal of weight loss, and it worked. Next slide, please. With any project, you need to have a firmly established why. When you are creating goals, whether it's for weight loss, saving for a down payment on a home, organizing your home, or advancing in your career, it's important to know what's behind that goal, what it is that truly matters. Any what needs a why to bolster it. And when we know the why, the what and the how get easier. And when your why is strong enough, it keeps you moving forward when the road gets bumpy. Next slide, please. In my book, I talk about SMART goals. And this is a concept I learned way back in my corporate life, long before I became a professional organizer. SMART goals include five specific markers, which make it more likely that you will achieve your goals. SMART is an acronym that stands for specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and time-bound. When setting a goal, the first criteria is that it should be specific. Have more time is fairly vague, but being able to chase after my grandson without becoming short of breath, that's fairly specific. Next, your goal must be measurable. If you can't track progress against a measurable goal point, how do you know if you're having success? If your goal is to lose 10 pounds by the end of the calendar quarter, that's a really measurable goal. You can measure your progress weekly by weighing yourself. And at the end of the quarter, it's easy to see if your current weight is equal to your starting weight minus 10 pounds. Achievable is the next component of a SMART goal. Don't set yourself up for failure by naming a goal that's so unrealistic it can't be achieved. Ask yourself whether it's in your power to accomplish this goal. To make your goal more achievable, you may want to create three smaller weight loss goals of say 15 pounds rather than one huge goal of 45 pounds because that might feel too overwhelming. Realistic is the next criteria to include in your goal setting. If over the next three months, you're going to be traveling for business, attending two weddings, going on vacation and taking care of a sick parent, is it realistic to think that you can also undertake a weight loss program and all of the planning and organizing it takes? Maybe you can, maybe you can't. You know you better than anyone else. 
I'm just challenging you to think about what else you have going on in your life and asking you to consider whether this is a realistic time to tackle your goal. The final part of the SMART acronym is time bound. Having a time frame is vital because it makes you accountable. If you simply say, I wanna lose five pounds so my clothes don't feel so tight, you haven't included a time bound element. Do you want to lose five pounds this month, this year, this decade, by the time you turn 75, before you die? That open-endedness is very different than saying, I want to lose five pounds and fit into my summer clothes by July 4th. So decide on your goal, know your specific why behind that goal, write it down, and maybe consider sharing it for accountability, and then go out and achieve it. Next slide, please. Of all the rooms in your home, organizing your kitchen has the biggest impact on a person's weight loss success. After all, that's where the food is kept, right? So let me share some kitchen organizing tips to help you achieve your weight loss goals. You'll want to organize your food storage, prep area, and dining environment to make it easier to take steps forward and realize weight loss success. If your kitchen cabinets are filled with chips and cookies and the fresh fruits and vegetables in the refrigerator are hidden away while the leftover cake is front and center, right at eye level, those poor kitchen organization choices are going to derail you every single time. When you're in your kitchen, you want to start by emptying out all of your cabinets as well as the pantry if you have one. Start by checking the expiration dates on products and then toss out any old or outdated items. Also, dispose of any food that no one in your house likes or will eat. You know, just because you bought a six pack of something at Costco or BJ's, if no one liked the first package when you opened it, there's really no reason to keep the remaining five. If the package is still fresh, donate it to a food pantry. If it's expired, go ahead and toss it. Next slide, please. So once you've discarded the extraneous items, you want to group food together by categories, putting like items together. For example, put all of the rice and pasta together, all of the canned vegetables together, all of the snacks and so on. When everything has a designated home and all the items in each category are stored together, you will know exactly where to look. Going on a scavenger hunt through your own home wastes time, decreases productivity, and is really aggravating. You want to make frequently used items accessible. You know, human nature is, is simple. If it's not easy, we're not gonna do it. Or if we actually do do it, we will be frustrated and overwhelmed. So simplify things for yourself and reduce your frustration by putting the items you use most often on an easy to reach shelf. I once had a client who stored the mixing bowls that she used every single night, either for food prep or for serving dinner on the top cabinet shelf. My barely five foot tall client couldn't reach those bowls without pulling out a step stool and climbing up on it. After I relocated those bowls to a lower shelf, she texted me to tell me I had changed her life. So even small changes can have a profound positive effect on your day-to-day -day life. Next, store items near where you use them to help simplify things for yourself. Storing items at their point of use saves time and increases productivity. Keep only those things that you need, use, or love. You know, no matter where you live, whether it's a small apartment, a townhouse, or a huge estate, the amount of space you have is finite and you need to use it wisely. So I want to challenge you to think about every item in your kitchen. Do you actually use all the spatulas you own? Would you gravitate toward the same two or three? Did you receive a large set of cookware for a housewarming or wedding gift but you only use three pans in the set. 
Did some well-meaning friend gift you with an ice cream maker or a propane torch for making creme brulee that you never use and it's just taking up space in your cabinet? Donate those unwanted, unused items so you have room for the things that you do use and for the products and tools that will help you on your weight loss journey. Next slide, please. When I was in college, I majored in psychology. And one of my favorite things was creating studies where you could manipulate different variables to see the effect they had on human behavior. When I was doing research for my book, I really geeked out when I discovered that there are a number of fascinating studies that demonstrate a correlation between clutter and weight gain. Researchers at Cornell University published an article entitled Clutter, Chaos, and Overconsumption, the Role of Mind Stress, Mindset in Stressful and Chaotic Food Environments. Their research demonstrated that women in a messy, cluttered kitchen consumed twice as many cookies as women in the same kitchen that was organized and uncluttered. Twice as many cookies simply because there were piles of stuff lying around. Another study suggests that women who keep cereal boxes on their counters weigh an average of 21 pounds more than those who keep their cereal behind cabinet doors. The same study demonstrated that women who keep their fruit in a bowl on the counter weigh six pounds less than those whose fruit is stored out of sight. Whether it's fruit or cereal, keeping an item visible seems to offer the power of suggestion. When it's in plain sight, you're more likely to consume it. So set your kitchen up in a way that demonstrates consciousness about what is visible. We do eat first with our eyes. How many times have you said, ooh, that looks delicious? What you see, what's out and visible, is what you're most likely to grab. Conversely, out of sight means out of mind, and out of mind means less likely to be consumed. So if you have young children or a partner who isn't weight conscious, making it necessary that you need or believe you need to keep less healthy snacks in the house, do yourself a favor and place those snacks in opaque containers behind cabinet doors or in a pantry. This way, the other members of your family are happy and you're less likely to see and they're therefore less likely to consume the snacks and the junk food. There was a study published in the Personality and Social Psychology Bulletin that demonstrated when a home environment is cluttered, it causes spikes in the stress hormone cortisol. As you probably know, many of us identify as stress eaters. When things in our lives feel out of control or overwhelming, we often reach for food for comfort to self-medicate. If we can organize and declutter our homes, and especially the kitchen, we may see a corresponding reduction in cortisol levels, which may in turn help with weight loss. If one of your goals for 2023 is to drop some pounds, recognize that clearing the clutter can clear the pathways toward weight loss success. Next slide, please. So when it comes to organizing your clothes closets, I am a big believer that everything in your closet should fit well, should be the current size, and be in good condition, meaning no missing buttons, no broken zippers, nothing with stains, no hems that are unraveling. I would encourage you to pack up the clothing that's too big or too small, and ideally donate it, but at the very minimum, store it elsewhere. If you successfully lose 20 pounds or more, you are going to be so proud of yourself that you're probably going to want to go out and purchase something new rather than wearing something that's been stored for the past five years and may no, may no longer be in style. Next slide, please. So let's talk about organizing your time to make room for health and fitness. Over the course of the nearly three decades helping clients get organized, I have often heard the excuse, but I just don't have time. And the reality is the time is what you need to spend on any worthwhile goal. Whether you're trying to organize paperwork in the daily mail, 
the clothes in your closets, the grocery shopping and meal prep for weight loss. Managing your time is key. All of us have the same 1,440 minutes each day. It's all a question of priorities and how you choose to use those minutes. Feeling like we don't have enough time is one of the biggest barriers to exercise, activity, and healthy eating. If getting healthy and losing weight is important to you, one way or another, you'll need to figure out how to manage your schedule to fit those things in. So keep in mind, with exercise, you don't need to devote a solid hour all at once, which can be challenging to schedule. Instead, maybe you can slot in four smaller blocks of 15 minutes over the course of a day or two. Or consider walking to your appointment or errand instead of driving. Consider multitasking to be more efficient with your time. I often use my time on my treadmill to watch a recorded TV show or read a novel. A friend recently told me that she started listening to audiobooks because it motivates her to walk farther and for a longer period of time. It's motivating because she wants to find out what happens next as the plot unfolds, so she keeps on moving. If you don't already own them, consider investing in a headset or a pair of earbuds. This will enable you to talk to a friend, listen to a podcast, or enjoy an audiobook while you move, or even do your kitchen meal prep. Other multitasking options include meeting a friend for a walk instead of coffee, walking your child to school, which is exercise coupled with quality parent-child time, or catching up with a friend by phone while you walk your dog. Next slide, please. So in summary, you can see that setting clear goals, organizing your home, and having a plan will help you on your weight loss journey. Shameless plug. In my book, I give you more tips, lists, and tools for managing the grocery store, organizing your schedule to fit in fitness, staying motivated, and managing your time. It's available on Amazon, and I believe the link is in the chat. And for those of you who are not big fans of Jeff Bezos, you can also purchase it online at Watch on Booksellers in Montclair, New Jersey. And Jean Marie, if you want to throw up the last slide, I'm happy to answer questions that anybody may have. Awesome. So uh, we're going to come out of uh, the slideshow in just a second. Um, and uh, I just want to mention before I do that, Next month's uh, Zoom call, for those of you who are interested, um, it's going to be on vital documents. And I will also have a guest speaker who is an attorney. So hopefully you can make that. Um, but now we go back to Deborah because I really want everybody to have time to ask questions. Um, oh my gosh, that was really, that was really great. That, I'm very excited. I'm very excited. So uh, I, I saved my lunch. I didn't eat my lunch yet. Um, and it just, I mean, I learned a lot, but the biggest thing I have to keep saying to myself is just don't bring it in the house. Like, because if I bring it in the house and I see it, even if I hide it, I know it's there. Right. So, uh, yeah. Or if, you know, if you really need it, purchase the, the, you know, sample size instead of the big family size, you know, um, the little Hagen dazs instead of the pint, the, uh, you know, the snack size Hershey Kisses instead of the three pound bag. Yep. Yep. All right. So let's go to the Brady Bunch because I don't want to hog your time. So Q&A, everybody, uh, you're welcome to unmute yourself and ask Deborah any questions you'd like. And if you don't feel comfortable asking, feel free to put it in the chat. The chat box. Mm -hmm. And then, Deb, if there's anything in the chat, let us know. Well, I'll just make a comment. This is Deb Davis. That uh, two things you said struck home about uh, leaving things out on the counter. My husband had bought some molasses cookies, and I don't know why he left them out on the counter Monday and Tuesday. And I probably had two cookies each day. And finally, I just put them away. I, why are they on the counter? That's just so ridiculous. And the second thing is, it's what I found about eight years ago when I lost about 53 pounds is I carved out that exercise time for me. And Jean Marie knows my schedule. I'm at the gym five days a week, nothing, nothing. Well, 
emergencies, but nothing messes with my gym time. And for me, it's, for since I work from home, it's social time as well. So I used to hate exercise, but when I found classes that I could take in a group situation that I loved, it was social, it was enjoyable, and that really helped me stuck to my stick to my exercise plan. That's that's great, Deb. And I think you, you made a really good point is you have to find something that you enjoy because mm -hmm. there are a lot of us who hate exercise, <laughs> me included. Um, but you have to find something that works for you. Uh, I will never be a runner, but I love to walk. And I love to walk and listen to books or um, we, something I started during the pandemic. My cousin lives on the West Coast and uh, she was also on a weight loss journey, and we set up these talk and walks where we would set a specific time that worked with the time zone change, and we would go out for an hour, and we would catch up once a week, and we would walk at the same time, and so it was exercise and catch up, and it it was really um, terrific. It was a great way to stay in touch and you know do something good for your body. I love that. Um, you know, in in my position now, I'm in a sales position, so I tend to work a lot and it's hard for me to structure it. Like, I don't feel like I can do what Deb Davis does um, because my schedule is constantly changing. But now, you know, I used to meet everybody for coffee. You know, I'd go and network here and network there. And now my first suggestion is, are you OK with a walk and talk or can we grab a cup of coffee and then go for a walk? And so I'm in Burden County, there's tons of parks, there's plenty of places to go. So that's my first suggestion now. Um, I also have something, I know Diane is on the call. I started something called Fun and Fit Fridays. Every two o'clock at Friday, I go hiking. And uh, it's like my female version of men's golf, you know? So um, I am always trying to think because I don't have blocked out time um, what can I do where I can get those snippets of exercise as well? So I love that tip. Thank you for that one. And one of these days I will make your Friday <laughs> fitness hike. Uh, it's on every week and then something happens, but I will get there. But, you know, um, I, I have two dogs and that is a great way to make sure that you get out and walk because if I don't walk them four or five times a day, I got a problem and I'm cleaning up. So, um, you know, they're not necessarily super long walks, but a, one loop around my um, my neighborhood is 15 minutes. And if I do that four or five times a day, that's my hour. Yeah, that's great. All right. Any other questions from the peanut gallery? I'm shocked. Or are we just em embarrassed? I don't mean embarrassed, but like... Organizing for um, for weight loss is kind of a, I think, a sensitive topic because, you know, I don't know, you get to a certain age and everybody struggles, uh, no matter how much it is. Um, yeah, there's yeah. that wonderful or just combating gravity. Yeah. Gravity, menopause. Yeah. Uh, lots of that going on. Um, but uh, I think for me, one of the hardest things to do is um, plan properly. So what I mean by that is, you know, doing the real grocery shopping and then the real prepping once you come back in with the groceries and then eating the things I said I was going to eat during the week, you know, um, because sometimes I'm just, I don't know, I get moody. And I, even if I had fish and broccoli scheduled and I come home and I'm like, God, I'd really like to order a pizza. But then I know I have to go back to my big why. And even though I haven't struggled like many others with weight loss over the years, um, I still want to be healthy. You know, very I very much want to be healthy, but I tend to go for, you know, sugar and caffeine. Um, and I have to go back to that big why. Like, why do I want to have, you know, the fish and the broccoli over the, you know, you know, chocolate peanut butter Lara bar. That's really <laughs> all in my name. So. But you know, wait, the, the point that you said is not just picking the right things, but making the time to do that prep. You know, I know the weeks that I do all of the prep on Sunday so that on busy days when I come into the house at seven o'clock, something is there. I don't have to think about making it. You know, I make a big pot of something that I can have for several nights and doing that makes it easy to make the right 
choices. It's when you come home and you're so hungry, you're ready to, you know, gnaw your arm off that you're grabbing for the fastest thing. And you know what? It's much faster to grab a sleeve of Oreos than it is to cut up and steam broccoli. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And I like broccoli. I do too. But, you know, when you're at that um, hangry point, you Yes, that term that I do so hungry that you're angry and cranky. Yeah. Yes. When you're when you reach hangry, you want whatever it is to grab. So after you do your grocery shopping, come home, you know, cut up the vegetables, cut up the fruit, put it in nice clear containers so that you can see it. Because again, we with our eyes, if it's in that opaque container, you're not even seeing it. So. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. All right. So we're at 101. Any last minute questions or you're going to lose your opportunity? Okay. No, right. My so contact is you, in the chat. If you think of a question later, feel free to reach out. Yes. So a uh, big thank you to Deborah Gossoff for joining us today. Great topic. Thanks for having me. You're so welcome. Um, and hopefully we'll see many of you next month on June 21st when we have the really exciting topic of vital documents. I know it's another subject people are like, oh. Um, so important so, though. Yeah. Very, very important. All right, everybody, have a great month, and we'll talk to you soon. Take care. Remember, if you want to see more videos on my organizing, productivity, and decluttering topics, hit the subscribe button, and you'll be alerted when the next one is ready.